Hey guys, welcome to Stevie 01. This is going to be a set of tutorials which are going to cover random questions I get from people, mostly from a guy named Steve. But other people's questions will be covered here as well. So this is something he sent me recently. He's like, how do I model this thing? Um, you know, it's a, and it's a rational question. You know, he tried using spheres and extrudes and stuff. And Well, I'm going to show you how I went about it. This was in some, it sent me a reference from someone else's reel. I don't know where it is, but anyway. So, I'm going to show you how I would do it. So, we've got the model here. As you see, we've got a lot of polys here. And I'll show you why we have those polys later, but let's begin. We got we start with a cube, because here, as you see, I saw, like, it, there's probably lots of ways of getting it, but I saw this used to be a cube, and it got extruded. So, let's delete this. I'm going to get a cube. Now, what I do is I make it editable by clicking here. But I'm using shortcuts, so if, you don't, if you're missing the shortcuts, just ask me in the comments and I'll tell you what shortcuts I'm using. So, I made it editable by pressing C. Now I go to polygon mode. I select all, control A, and I press D and I extrude. Now, extruding here is a bit of a guessing game because your goal is you want this edge to this edge to be the same distance as this height here. There's an easy way to check that. Once you've extruded, you go to Tools, and you go Measuring Construction. And you get this thing, and you drag one spot there, and you drag the other spot there. And look at 217, nearly perfect. So close enough for our purposes. If you want it to be more accurate, just undo, and extrude, oops. And press D to extrude, extrude again until you get it approximately correct, you know. Um, I think around somewhere here should be fine. There we go. Again, we go back to tools, we go measuring construction, and 197. You know, it's pretty much a square. Because we want these things to be squares here because this length must equal this length. So, what we do now is we go select and we go set selection because we're going to need this selection. What we did here is basically if we deselect stuff, select something else. And we want to go back to our selection. We can double click on it, and we have our squares. Very convenient. Now we invert the selection, which is UI, or select invert. It basically selects all the polygons that were not selected. And we delete them. Also, let's get rid of this measuring tool. Um, delete measure. We don't need it anymore. OK, so now edge tool, right click, bridge. And now we click and drag, and we joined these edges together. Boom, boom, boom. And we put it in. And drag them together. We just click and drag between the edges. And ta da! Now, as you can see, we still have these holes. We can do create polygon um, and click on the points and then double click on the third one. That's valid. But there's also this cool tool called close polygon hole which is really helpful in our case. If you just click on the edges and if there's a hole, it automatically closes it. And now, as you can see, we've got the shape. Now, what we do is we select all of them. We press the I key, which is extrude inner. We go to polygon mode, press the I key again, I. And now, if we click and drag, uh, this happens because one place is selected. Select them all. Oh, look, this one's. See, this is the problem with creating polygon tools. Sometimes you get a face which normal is facing the wrong way. So all you do is go right click once everything selected and you go align normals. Now everything's good. So now I press the I key and we drag, uh, nothing happens because this button here is ticked on. That's not what we want. So undo, make sure it's unticked, click and drag, and this way we'll get some edges between the faces. Now for the next step in my demonstration, uh, the simple way to do this, obviously, is you just make another extrude. But see, as you see, the triangles get too small and the squares are still big. So we're going to go undo, and we're going to select these triangles. Just the triangles. Holding the Shift key, when you click, you add them to the selection. And there we go. And now, we can go to select, 
and set selection. Now we have, oops, see here, see how there's no, the new triangle didn't appear? So undo that and go and unselect this triangle. Click on the cube again and go select, set selection. Now if we double click this one, we have squares, over this one, we have triangles. The problem here is we have the wrong squares because we're missing all these squares. So we're going to add to the selection. We're going to shift, click, 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 shift, click. Now we have, oops, sorry. And now we have all of them selected. By the way, if you accidentally click here and you lose it, you can just go undo and your selection comes back. It's very convenient. The selection is like part of the undo process. And now we'll have this first tag selected. We go select, set selection. And now if we double click on this, we have triangles. If we double click on this, we have squares. Wonderful. So let's go I and scale these squares in to about yay big. Put the triangles, scale them in to about yay big. And now we select the square thing again, but not double click, just once this time. And we go select polygons. Now it'll add the selection to what you already have selected. And now we just go scale tool. Make sure everything's selected, make sure all these are ticked, and just click and drag. Ta-da! We have our shape. However, it's not very smooth right now. Um, the lighting on it is, like, the lighting will hit it not very well because of, oh look, well, sorry. Because the phone breaks are just not nice. You can turn off phone, you can drag it down, and then you have a much kind of hard edges but you don't always want hard edges. Sometimes you want, you know, sorry, let me just get some light so you can see what's going on. You don't always want these hard edges. So the obvious solution is put in a hypernode, right? So holding out the key, click hypernode. Uh, unfortunately, it goes all smoothie, which could be an effect you're going for. It's not a bad effect. I mean, to increase hypernodes, dot division a bit. Um, but not what we're going for. So. What we're going to do is we're going to select all these polygons. We're going to control A, select everything, right click, and here's subdivide. You can't see it. Um, it's down here, subdivide. And next to it, there's a little box. Maybe, maybe it's here, mesh. And um, conversion. No, it's not in there. Okay, well, anyway, you have to trust me. If you right click, uh, at the bottom there's subdivide, and there's a little black box next to it. You really have to click a black box, and you get this little window appearing. Now, this window, uh, hypernerves smooths with the subdivision. Like, I'll show you the difference here. If we press one right now, we turn off the hypernerves here, you'll see the square edges are still square edges. Now, if we undo this subdivision, let's go back to the original one, if we now go right click and we subdivide and we tick this hypernerves. See how it moves it into the circles that we don't want? So we undo this. We subdivide three times, but untick this hypernerves thing. We don't want that. As you can see now, we've got a lot more polygons, but everything's still really sharp. So if you still render now, it still looks it has really sharp edges. Even if you turn the phone back up to like 80, it looks nice, but it's still, I don't like it, this weird stuff there. So, we turn on the hypernerves, take it, both of them down to one, we don't need that much. And now, we have a nice smooth shape. Isn't that great? So yes, there you go. This is how we model this shape. Hope you enjoyed it. I will try to get more Stevies up soon. I got a whole folder of stuff that I've been doing over the last year, and you know, Go visit my website, ace5education.com. Um, where's my little Picasso button? Mm. Well, ace5education.com. There'll be more tutorials coming up there soon, hopefully. This should be on a YouTube channel. If it's not, email me or you know, notify me because that's where it's hosted, on my YouTube channel. More videos in there as well, and hopefully more will be coming. So yeah. Have fun.